Hey guys, welcome to the next tutorial of ethical hacking and penetration testing via Kali Linux. So, in this tutorial, we will be learning about the database of Metasploit in detail, and after that, we will be checking about the session hijacking and session hijacking for uh, for secure layers. That's HTTPS. So, let's first let me go ahead and fire up my Kali Linux. Okay, enter. Metasploit has n number of databases and it's like, you can say that it's infinite because it's never ending. The more you keep on learning, the more there is to learn. So in this tutorial, I'll be going ahead and um, giving you a detailed information about a uh, database. I won't be able to cover everything, but I will be covering most of the things today. So most of the important things. Okay, perfect. So I'll just go ahead and fire up my terminal. Okay. So uh, when you're conducting a penetration testing on any of your client, it is frequently a challenge to keep track of everything you have done to the target network. This is where having a database configured can be a great time saver. And Metasploit has built-in support for PostgreSQL and a database system. I have taught you previously about the MySQL, how we could go ahead and use the MySQL or the SQL injection and the SQL map to go ahead and hack into different stuff. So in this tutorial, I'll be teaching you about the uh, Metasploit database. So the system allows quick and easy access to scan information. And uh, uh, the Calidex gives us the ability to import and export scan results from various third party tools. We can also use this information to configure module options rather quickly. Most importantly, it helps us our keep our results clean and organized. So um, I'll just first go ahead and see if I could get something from over here. Okay. So no help topics mass database. Try help help and so I'll just go ahead and type MSF console. So let's go ahead and start or set up our Metasploit database and uh, in Cal Linux you will need to start the Postgur SQL server before using the database. So let's go ahead and first start service postgres sql start perfect and once you have started the metasploit service it will create a msf3 data user and a database called as msf3 so i'll just have to go ahead and uh, start the same thing again uh, that's service i'll just go ahead and close this one type meta exploit start so when we uh, load up the msf console and run the database status we can confirm that metasploit is successfully connected to the database as you can see uh, you can see over here which has been connected so i can go ahead and type db underscore status okay i need to go ahead and run that in the msf console command i believe once it started let's go ahead and check whether our database is connected or not as you can see it has started to create the keys that we asked it to this is the database that it's loading along with the postgresql server perfect so let's go ahead and check whether our database has connected db underscore status okay perfect as you can see postgresql is connected to the msf3 so seeing this capability is uh, it's meant to keep track of our activities and scans in order it's very imperative that we start off on the right foot. Once connected to the database, we can start organizing our different movements by using what are called as workspaces. This gives us the ability to save different scans from different locations, networks, and subnets, for example. So, issuing the workspace command from the default um, Metasploit console will display the current selected workspaces. The default workspace is selected when connecting to the database, which is represented by the asterisk sign beside its name so i'll just go ahead and type workspace and as you can see we have this current one is a default as we can see that this can be quite in handy when it comes to comes to keeping things neat let's change the current workspace to msfu so i'll just type workspace space msfu okay i believe it's uh, not accepting let me check Okay, it's not uh, allowing itself to connect. 
I'll just go ahead and type workspace and let's see it's still default. So creating and deleting a workspace, uh, one can simply use the minus A or uh, minus D. Let me just see what I could get. Okay, perfect. So as you can see, uh, you can go ahead and see, uh, switch workspace by typing the workspace and specific stuff. And if you need to add a workspace, then I can use hyphen A. To delete, I can use hyphen D. To rename, uh, I can go ahead and use the hyphen E and uh, I'll just type workspace asterisk. Okay, so this is the default or uh, the name of the workspace is default as you can see from over here. So let me check if I could go ahead and use the workspace one. Okay, it's not there. Perfect. So I'll just go ahead and create another workspace. So I'll just type workspace hyphen A and I'll type let's say lab 4. That means I'm creating uh, another workspace. If I just go ahead and type workspace again, as you can see, we have two workspaces right now. And uh, lab 4 is the default one. After that, I can just go ahead and delete it by typing hyphen D. And again, I am back to the default one. Or so it's that simple. Using the same command and adding the hyphen H switch will provide us with the commands and other capabilities. So from now on, any scanner imports from third party applications will be saved into this workspace. Now that we are connected to our database and workspace setup, let's look at populating it with some data. First, we will look at the different types of database commands available to use using the help command from the MSF console. So I could just go ahead and type help and let's see what all do we get. It's an extremely big list so you will be needing to wait. By the meantime, I'll say that it's actually importing and scanning all the necessary stuff that it has right now. And there are several ways that we can do this from scanning a host or network directly from the uh, console or importing a file from an earlier scan. We can start by importing the an nmap scan of metasploitable to host. And this can be done using the database import followed by the part to our file. So as of now I don't have the nmap scan but I will surely show you how we could do that. So let me see. Okay, I believe my terminal has stopped. I'll just again go ahead and start it. Perfect. So uh, let me check if um, okay. I'll first go ahead and import the data. I'll show you how we could go ahead and import the database. And okay, uh, let's say for example, I'll just first go ahead and create a workspace. And after that, I'll just go ahead and the import the database slash slash and if I had the nmap scan over here I'll just go ahead and type I don't have it right now but I'm just showing you how we could do that and after that if you go to just go ahead and hit enter it will go ahead and select uh, the specific nmap scan file so once completed we can go ahead and confirm the import by issuing the host command so you could just type host and it will show you all the associated commands over here this will display all the hosts stored in our current workspace. As of now, I don't have any. We can also scan a host directly from the MSF console DB and map. So we'll just type DB underscore and map and it will go ahead and show me different options. So scan results will be saved in our current database and the commands uh, works the same way as the command line version of and map. That's DB and map hyphen A space and 192.168.123.111. This is an example and after you go ahead and do that, I'll just go ahead and cancel it. It will go ahead and start the scanning. That's why after that you can just go ahead and type host. It will give you all the necessary details for that. So that would be it for this tutorial. In the next tutorial, I'll be continuing with the backing of our data and exporting dif uh, through different ways uh, through the database command in Metasploit.